Hello there. I thought I'd write and record a little video just to demonstrate and how we're going to go about extracting this information. Hopefully it'll be a little easier to see if you see me actually writing the code than just rather dully displayed on the page there. So we've headed over to the uh, our website where we've got the information. So we're on the Renewable UK's website and some of the points to note here we've got this table of operational wind farms which we want to extract. And the web page itself, as it's, it's, it's nicely laid out, we've got some table elements table here. We've got some of the page elements up here along the top, um, and we've got thirteen columns uh, in our table and an, an unknown number of rows. And it's, it's unknown because um, uh, it's dynamic, simply because new wind farms are going to be added to the list, um, and potentially old farms are going to be removed off when they're decommissioned. So we can't rely on there being a fixed number. It's not that there's always 100 elements to the table. There are a variable number. But we can handle that in the code. So main things to note here. This table on the web page, 13 columns, a variable number of rows, and it's a table amongst other elements on the page. So we'll fire up our uh, Python um, uh, shell and uh, start writing some code. So I've already uh, populated the shell here with some uh, sort of base information. We see we've got our, our main function here. Um, we have two libraries, uh, URLib2, uh, which comes with Python, so you'll already have that. Um, we have um, Beautiful Soup, which is an additional library which we need to install. There are links in the, the main page, uh, main blog. And we have a little um, an extra header at the top here to handle uh, defining where the Python environment is in, in, a, in a Unix or Linux system. Uh, Windows doesn't necessarily need to have that installed, in fact it doesn't, but we leave it in there for completeness. So, we want our code to do a number of things. The first thing of course is to head over to the website and import the website data. So we we'll use URLib2 uh, to pull the website information into a new object. We'll then hand pass that object data over to Beautiful Soup, which is a great library to handle the processing and, and scraping of website data. We'll process it a little bit in Beautiful Soup, so it'll know it knows what table and rows and so on and so forth are. So we'll use its built-in capacities there. We'll then need to uh, pass all those that table information, so the the, the 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 strings of that table into a new object to handle just that table information um, and then because of that that will essentially build a long um, a list but just a long element single element of data we'll then want to write some bit of code which will go through that list and pull off the individual elements so it'll pull off say wind farm a and all its data put that into its own element or an item we'll then want to go through the next station the next station and so on and so forth the reason for doing that is that it's going to make it a lot easier later on to handle and compare stations. So say for example we wanted to uh, pass the information to a database um, or we wanted to use a numerical library to say uh, calculate the average of um, the capacities of the, all the wind farms in a particular location. Um, it's much easier if you've got the wind farm data in its own discrete um, item of a list, so item A, wind farm A, item B and all the associated data with B, C and so on and so forth. So that will require writing uh, an extra function but I'll show you when we get to that stage how to do that. So let's let's proceed. So the first thing I want to do is obviously I'm going to write some new real time so you'll see all my typos uh, live to uh, tape as it were uh, up here. So we'll use the URL library and we'll open up the web page. Obviously, if you're using this script, um, and you're more than to, of course, um, in your own code, uh, and you're going to a different website, obviously, you'd modify some of these details. The website being one, of course. So we pass into it the uh, web address. And that's going to return an object called URL, which has all the data from the web page. We want to pass that into Beautiful Soup, so I'll just make a new object to handle that uh, called Beautiful Soup. And oh, the object has called Soup, but calling Beautiful Soup, we'll pass the URL in. 
and then Visual Suit knows um, what a table is and um, what the row and so forth, so forth are because it can recognize the HTML tags that are in um, in our web page. So we want to put out the table. So we'll call it table extract uh, for want of a better phrase. And soup.find find all. Now we text find all tables. Now I happen to know um, through prior inspection that the table we want is uh, the second element. And of course, in fact, it's the third because the array starts at 0, 0, 1, 2, 3. So we just tell Beautiful Soup to go and find the second uh, table um, in the web page. And then from that table, pull out all the rows. So we'll just make another object called rows. And from table extract, again, find all and we'll go rows. So the HTML tag for rows TR, table row. And that's about it for the HTML processing. Pretty simple. Um, now what we want to do is we're going to want to go through this rows and find all the individual elements. So each of those cells of the, that row. So to do that, we're going to create a liquid object to uh, or list to, to hold them in. So I'll call it output wind for the sake of argument. And we also want to make it a quick incremental counter. Um, because we're going to loop through a certain number each time. So that done, what we're going to do is for I just call it rows. So while the length of the object that is our extract, um, while x is less than the number of rows, so we do here is because we don't know how many rows there's going to be in in our um, data. Remember, maybe the stations get added, stations get removed. We're going to go through there and just until x is, is less than number of rows. Then, for each column, I want, I want beautiful soup to find again find all being our friend um, each HTML element called TD. TD in HTML um, is the individual discrete cell, if you like, of each row. Um, well, we'll reach row and column. So we find each of those, and then for each columns, D in columns, what we want to do is then say, okay, well, find the text of that element. So the text that corresponds to the, the date of commissioning, the station name, its coordinates, its capacity, and so on and so forth. So you can do that by uh, just looping through again, and we want to make, pull out the text for those. So I'll make the text to join and TD find. Now, if we were certain that our cells only ever contained text and no web elements, so no HTML code, then this would be superfluous. We don't. Each of those cells is going to have some formatting data or extra HTML code. So we want to just strip off only the text. Right? So only where this there's the element is text. Um, and then we're just going to vote a string to be uh, uh, which we've done. And then we want to then remove any uh, blank spaces because there may be some additional spaces either side of our text. So um, additional formatting and stuff. So that we use the strip to do that. And then we'll just append And to um, the output object. So, and then we'll just increment our counter by one. Finally, for this little section, I happen to know that the the table element has four uh, blank elements to start, which we can get rid of. So I'll just do output wind. And then I'll delete off those elements. And that is almost all the way we need to be. Now, if I ran this now, what we'd see, in fact, I'll just do a quick demonstration and say for stuff in output 
wind and stuff. Now, what we'll do is uh, if I just run this now, what we'd find is just a long mass of text being extracted. So I just jump in so you can see here's all this stuff, right? And it's fine, it's, it's got the information we want in there. It's got the top. Uh, we can see that there's the head of the table, and then you've got all the information here, which is okay. Now, yeah, okay, we got stuff out, we can do something more with it. So the more with it is to write a quick function to go through uh, output wind and uh, split off that data into groups of 13. Remember I said there were 13 columns. So we'll do that, we'll define it as pairs, as pairs of data, and this little function will pass into a list, so I'll call that L. And we also want a number, i.e. the number of uh, units which we want to split that text by. So I return zip, and if you don't know the zip library, it's just, uh, I strongly recommend you go and look it up. It's a fantastically powerful library, and I might do a video at some stage on it. Um, but for now, just take it as read to something like the function. So let's go from i to n. So that's how many elements. Uh, and then for i in range of n. And what this is going to do is then go through and um, split out our list into elements of 13 units long, 13 items long for each station. As simple as that. So let's take off this uh, demonstration bit here, and then we'll say with that function how to find. Let's go and use it. So I'll make all wind farms. Just a new little object uh, equal to the pairs, and we'll pass into our list, which is output wind, and I give it split it by 13, corresponding to the 13 columns. And now with this all wind farms, now I'm just going to write it so it prints off the list just for demonstration purposes, but obviously you might want to um, pass that list in something else, maybe a, a, a database or some numerical program, something like that. Or maybe you just want to print it off, you know, save it as a text file, for example. So I'm just going to demonstrate today. So for wind farm in all wind farms. Uh, print wind farm. So if I run that now, what we'll see, I'll interrupt it of course again. Save that. Oh. Ah. That. And if I run it again, let me see. I'll just interrupt it is. Now each wind farm or each group is its own nice little defined uh, element. So look, there is our element table, and we start to refer to this in other stuff. Uh, much more useful, much more powerful. Uh, but obviously you might want to write this off to what you want it. So that hopefully demonstrates what we do. So in, in recap, we set up a main function. Uh, we've imported two libraries, beautiful soup and URLib2. We've defined our source information and extracted it out of the table. We've made a new list to append this information to. We've gone back through our extract and found all of the individual cell elements within that table. We've done a little bit of data housekeeping on it. Um, and then we've written a little quick, another, another function, which will take our list and split it into 13 chunks of 13. Um, and then we've just displayed it for purposes um, of, of this, uh, this video. Hopefully that's, uh, that explains it all. Any questions, uh, send me an email, put something in the comments, and I'll, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Hi, thank you very much.